Okay, this is going to be a video response to Charles's little podcast talk that he put on his user page not so long ago. If you haven't checked that out, you should definitely give that a listen, especially if you're into mapping. So I just want to go over what he said about the physical response, because he did have his theories, but I don't really fully agree with them. When he was talking about physical response, he well, what he meant by physical response is the physical movement of your hand while you're moving from one object to the other, which is fair enough because our standard is about moving a cursor in time to the beat to each hit object. So his theories on what makes a good physical response is, well first he went over expectations, something called expectations, and then he finished up saying the reason why certain flows are expected, some why certain flows play well is because of handwriting and to me that seemed a little weird because in theory I think someone is able to pick up us and play it to a decent level without learning how to write so I think there's a little more to it than just handwriting I think there's something much more fundamental that we can break this down into to see why certain flows play well so what did Charles mean by expectation? Why does an expected flow feel satisfying to hit? Why does it give off a good physical response? I could probably sum this up in one word. Momentum. Every single object that moves has a physical fundamental property called momentum. There are two types of momentum. There is linear momentum and there's angular momentum. Linear momentum plays more of a role for a single object and the immediate objects around it, whilst angular momentum is more important for entire combos and patterns. So, so let's go over linear momentum first. First of all, we need to recognise that our standard is a two-dimensional game. That means when you move your cursor across the screen, there is an X component and a Y component. You can also rotate this axis to suit different patterns. For instance, in this case, when we have one object here and another object here, you can rotate it so that there is an X component going in this direction and a Y component is perpendicular to the X direction and is going in this direction instead. So let's take a look at these two objects. First of all, let's assume that the player will snap to each major object. I'm fairly sure that the vast majority of us players will snap to the notes in their map when they play. So when you're moving from the first object to this second object, your momentum is going to move in this direction. Now once you arrive at this circle, you'll want to come to a stop. So, so your change in momentum will be moving in this direction. Or you could also call the change in momentum your acceleration. So acceleration is going to be moving opposite to your momentum so that you can come to a halt on this circle. Now since your acceleration is moving backwards in this direction, your tendency to continue moving in this direction due to your acceleration is much greater. So if we were to place an object about here-ish, then due to our acceleration already moving in that direction, our tendency to move back in this direction is much greater and so it is much easier for someone to continue their momentum so that they move back down again to hit this object here. This is what Charles meant by expectation. Our tendency to want to move in a certain direction due to our current momentum and acceleration. Let's take a look at a different setup. So we have three objects here but instead of last time when three was tucked in behind one like this, we have them all set on an angle. Or, well, it's in a triangle shape. If you break down every major pattern in a map, you can break them down into triangles. So, why do triangles work? So now we need to consider the two dimensions we talked about earlier. We have the X direction and the Y direction. For this pattern, when you're moving from 1 to 2, your momentum in the y direction will be moving like this, and then your momentum in the x direction will be moving like this. 
So when you combine them both together, your total momentum will be moving exactly from 1 to 2. So once you arrive at 2, you want to come to a stop. And so your acceleration or your change in momentum will be moving downwards so that you will stop on 2. However, your next object is also on 3, so your tendency to want to move back down again is much greater, so your momentum will continue moving downwards so that you can hit 3. Now in the x direction, there is no change in momentum because the distance from 1 to here is the same from here to here. So there is no change in momentum in the x direction. But in a y direction, you have your acceleration moving downwards, and so your tendency to keep moving back down again is much greater, and so this setup is fairly easy to hit. Let's take a look at good linear momentum on a ranked map. So this map is Senya Hitomi ni Kakusaleta Omoi, mapped by satellite. We're just going to take a look at this combo right here. So first of all, let me play this out for you. Right, so first of all, let me lower the approach rate and get rid of the spinner so that we can take a look at this combo a lot easier. First, let's consider the axis for this pattern, which is pretty much almost normal, but it's fairly slightly off, but we'll just draw it in just so you can see. It's pretty much like this. You have your X going in this direction and your Y going in this direction. So your first object is here, and you're moving down uh, to 2, so it is parallel almost with this y-axis. I haven't drawn it perfectly, but I can't be perfect. So we can see that across this pattern, the x-momentum is pretty much going to be almost constant. It's not perfect, say, from 2 to 4. It's not exactly perfect length from 2 to 4 and then 4 to 6, but... Uh, it's fairly negligible, so let's assume that the change in momentum in the x-direction is constant. So we don't need to worry about that. So let's take a look at all the momentum changes in the y-direction. So from 1 to 2 we go down, and so once we reach 2, our change in momentum will want to move back up again, and so our momentum will also move back up. And then once you hit 3, you'll want to move back down again, and it's just constantly going back like this. Up, down, up, down, up, down, all in the same direction until you land on 8, which is a triple, and so you'll want to come to a complete standstill to hit this standing triple. But the reason why this pattern is good is because each, each object lands in the vicinity of where your tendency to where you want to move your cursor lies. So once you land on 2, your tendency to move your cursor back up again is in the vicinity of 3. Uh, considering constant momentum in the x direction and the change in momentum in the y direction is always in one direction, each object lies exactly where you expect it to be. Now the reason why 1 and 2, the jumps between 1, 2 and 5, 6 are greater than 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 is because there are stronger beats than 1, 2 and 5, 6 which is another aspect to what's expected. The stronger beats, you'll want much stronger movements in your in your play. So if I play it again, you can hear the strong beats once we play these ones. It's a bit harder to view with the approach rate, but you get the idea. So each object lies in the vicinity of where you are expected to hit due to the tendency of your movement. And so this pattern plays really well in my opinion. So, so what makes bad linear momentum? So we have this setup here, and this setup is an example of bad linear momentum, especially if you are a snapping player. Why is that? Now let's take a look at the components of the momentum. So when you're moving from 1 to 2, your momentum is moving in this direction. Once you land on 2, you want to come to a stop. So your acceleration, or your change in momentum, is moving opposite to your momentum so that you'll come to a stop. Now, 3 is over here. It's in the 
opposite direction to your acceleration. When you came to a stop on two, it's in the opposite direction to your tendency of movement. So once you land on two, you're going to have to change your acceleration again to move towards three. And this here is why this pattern is unintuitive to play. The fact that you have to change your momentum twice on one object. So let's take a look at how I would play this. So you start on one, you speed up, start slowing down, slowing down, stop on two, and then you're going to have to move again. You're going to have to accelerate again to move to three. And that's what makes this pattern unintuitive. The fact that you have to change your acceleration twice. So Charles also said that right angles were also fairly tricky to hit. So let's try and have a look at why that is. So just like last time, we're going to take a look at the momentum changes in this pattern. Uh, however, unlike last time, this is in two dimensions. So from one to two, we have our momentum going in this direction. And once you come to two, you want to stop. So your acceleration is moving opposite to your momentum so that you can come to a stop. In the y direction, there is no momentum. So we can ignore that. However, once you're on two, three is up here. So you want to change your acceleration. So it's going upwards so that it lands on three. So your momentum can go upwards. We have two acceleration components. This is what makes it tricky, just like last time. Two acceleration components, however, they are perpendicular to each other, so it is a little easier to hit than when three was over here. However, the fact that we have two acceleration components on one object, this is why some people struggle to hit right angles. That's pretty much all I have to say about this. I'm not going to go over angular momentum, maybe if there's interest I might go over it, but for now that's all I have to say on this matter, so thanks for watching. Actually there's one final thing, everything I said here was just my theory, it's just my take on this thing. I'm not going to claim that I am 100% correct, this is just my theory to discuss what Charles was talking about.